Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ray Lin, and today I'm going to bring you what is probably the biggest gorilla in the room as far as MMOs go, and this is going to be World of Warcraft and its latest expansion, Legion. Uh, for those of you that don't want to listen to any of me talking about this and risk any kind of spoilers on the story, probably don't want to listen past this point, because maybe not anything in the trailer will be a spoiler for you, but... I want to talk a little bit about the story as it goes, uh, especially with the new class, the Demon Hunter, which is being added and is now currently playable if you bought the digital edition, deluxe or otherwise. But anyway, this is World of Warcraft. I've been playing World of Warcraft since, well, about three months after it came out. I started in February 2005, and uh, yeah, so that's about 11 years I've been playing this game, so... Uh, taking breaks periodically, of course. Uh, the game is, as many people probably know, uh, rather involved when it comes to raiding and gearing up and raiding and beating bosses and uh, questing and grinding and just doing a whole bunch of things because the game is, of course, extremely large in scope and scale and it is, as always, one of the biggest MMO RPGs that ever came around. Uh, numbers have been dwindling for several years now. Uh, a lot of people didn't like some of the last few expansions, like Cataclysm and even uh, Wrath of the Lich King. A lot of people didn't like Mists of Pandaria. Overall, a lot of people have kind of wanted Blizzard to go back a little bit to the Burning Crusade days. A lot of people really enjoyed Burning Crusade. It was kind of a darker, more gritty sort of uh, style to it and the story was a little bit darker and gritty and I think they're kind of doing that with Legion I mean the Legion has been uh, it has been this big foe kind of in the darkness we've they've touched on it we fought them here and there bits and pieces but never quite to this extent and this is the opening cinematic trailer that they've uh, it's been out for a while now and this isn't really anything to do with the spoilers but some of the stuff that happens in the opening shots once you start playing the game is pretty significant uh, especially for the demon hunters because you do take a trip sort of back in time your your whole demon hunter experience is more or less told sort of in a flashback which is exactly what it is you go back to burning crusade uh when we were assaulting as heroes of azeroth the black temple to take illidan down once and for all and so that's kind of where the demon hunter story starts is right there and you find out pretty quick that even though illidan was considered you know insane or maybe he'd become more demon than night elf and had turned against everyone and they called him the betrayer at the end of the day, he ended up being right. You know, he was trying to stop the Legion, and you're pretty much going to see how everything sort of got screwed up because we intervened and, and stopped Illidan from more or less saving Azeroth. And uh, that's kind of where the, the Demon Hunters come in. And I'll show you my Demon Hunter right now. Uh, they're a little bit simpler of a class to play on the surface. They don't have... Uh, three tech trees like every other class. They've only got two. They've got a DPS spec and they have a tank spec, which is called Vengeance, and the DPS spec is called Havoc. Uh, they the the gameplay between those two specs, however, is vastly different. Obviously, between a tank and a DPS, uh, a lot of the the moves are not shared between the specs at all, and this goes for all of the classes. Uh, in previous expansions, a lot of what happened in the expansion is almost every class got some moves shuffled around they got a few moves combined to form other moves and then a bunch of new things were usually added and as you go down the tech tree you unlocked even more moves and as you leveled up to you know from 70 to 80 to 90 and so forth you learned new skills so the tech tree and your abilities on your hot bar here just kept going up and up and up and it just was sort of spiraling out of control in a lot of ways so with Legion, World of Warcraft is kind of drawing everything back. Uh, it's really condensed everything down for most classes to 8 to 10 buttons, and that's pretty much it. Uh, a lot of the specs for a lot of the classes, including Demon Hunter, it's just no longer that complicated. And uh, I don't know if that was to bring in, you know, more younger people to the game that, you know don't have Razor Naga mice and, you know, tons of macros to set up. 
And uh, I'm just kind of showing off my character. This is my tank spec, and the demon form that you take is called Metamorphosis. It's a long cooldown. It gives you a huge boost to a lot of your abilities for a short duration. And you can see this is what it looks like if you're tank spec. And I'm going to flip over here in just a second so you can see what the Havoc DPS version looks like as it is actually different from the tank spec in every way. The only difference is, is you know, you're using the same weapon which is, by default, your Warglaives. And, of course, for those people that always wanted the Warglaives of Azanoth, well, here you go. You know, Now you get to play around with them and uh, have a lot of fun with it. And as you can see, the specs and the forms of those specs are definitely different. And I, of course, like this spec a little bit more. You get the wings, you get the hooves. Uh, it's very, very Illidan-ish looking. And so, this is all pre-patch. You get all of the classes doing all of the uh, changes and every spec for every class is vastly different now in a lot of ways from any previous expansion. So, uh, there are a few things that stayed similar. Uh, a lot of moves got combined into other moves. Some completely removed altogether. And some moves you only get in certain specs for a class. So, if you're thinking, like, for, for example, the Rogue, uh, they don't get poisons unless they are an assassination rogue, so you got to keep that in sort of mind. The, the self-healing and self-buffs for most of the classes are now just gone. Uh, certain abilities will heal you in certain uh, specs, but not every spec has uh, healing anymore, so you're going to have to rely on your healers a lot more than before, kind of like in the old and vanilla days where, you know, without a healer, you just didn't heal, and that's... Uh, Kind of going back to a lot of the basics, I think. But in a lot of ways, it just kept everything to, to, to where now your DPS is relying on heals. And, and you've got to keep your DPS alive to get through the raids. Before, everyone had enough buffs and heals that a lot of fights were just kind of trivial. I mean, you could keep yourself alive and every class seemed to be able to do it in some form or fashion. On a, either a short cooldown or just something that was automatic. Well, most of that's gone now. And a lot of the abilities are now uh, toned down in number to just kind of allow you to use, you know, one or two two bars. I mean, you're just not going to be overwhelmed as badly in Legion as you might have been in previous installments of World of Warcraft. And uh, along with the pre-patch, there's always some kind of event that usually is part of the pre-patch. And until August 30th, the big events right now is the Legion Invasions. And this is what you're seeing right now. Uh, the Legion Invasions, they pop up on the world map. You can see them as these swirling green portal-looking icons. And they're phased basically to you. So as you can see, there's a stage one on the right-hand side of the screen there. And that means I'm in stage one and there's a progress bar going up. And as soon as it fills up, just like there, it'll switch automatically to stage two and uh, you start getting new items and stuff like that when you proceed through these different stages. Now, stage two, there you can see there's a couple of commanders we have to defeat and a couple of bodyguards and things like that. And uh, essentially, the, there's a currency that drops off of almost everything here uh, called nether shards. And those nether shards you can spend at a vendor to buy some level 700 item level gear. And it's more or less it's a catch-up mechanic for people that might have had multiple characters but couldn't get them into raids or just didn't have the time. So that you're not starting completely cold turkey into uh, Legion, you have a way with these events to actually get some okay gear. It's not mind-blowing, it's not going to change anything, but it is a huge step up, especially if you only had around level 640 gear or something like that. And so you want to do these uh, events for sure. You get nether shards which let you buy uh, some of the items that are kind of cool, some transmog items and stuff like that. But as you kind of uh, go through these stages, when you defeat stage two, you'll get a small legion chest which contains armor and uh, it has a chance to contain an item upgrade. Uh, and so you want to get through stage two, through stage three, which will be coming up in just a minute, and then stage four where you fi kill the final quote-unquote final boss of that invasion and that will get you a large legion chest which has a chance to have uh, a few more things in it I mean, the nether shards and some armor and all of that armor has been recently buffed to sometimes come out of the chest as warforged therefore instead of an item level 700 item it might be an item level 710 or even a 720 so 
higher base stats. So, I mean, it's all basically for free, and these reset every four hours. So, by the time that you've done this one and fly to another, there's usually two, uh, one on each continent. Uh, as the weeks tick by, though, the, the invasions speed up and we get more and more going on. So, right now, there's three at any one time that are up. And since it's phased to you, and I really like that idea, as long as you get within the map that the invasion is happening on, you don't have to worry that you're going to show up and already, the, oh, they've beaten the boss. It's not That's not how it works. If you fly into a map and it says on your world map that there is an invasion going on, it automatically starts you at stage one, uh, unless you're just very, very on the, on the very brink of it moving from stage one to stage two. You don't lose anything by not being there for stage one, and... Uh, or even basically stage two. You just want to be there when the boss dies at some point and be on the map. Uh, you don't really even have to tag any of these enemies and even low level people can do it. Uh, it still gives you the chest even if you're just standing there AFK. It does give you a lot of experience actually for every stage that you go through. So people have been using it as a leveling mechanic, which is actually pretty cool. I I'm glad that Blizzard... Uh, they did nerf the experience, and then they kind of unnerfed it and said, well, you know, it's a limited event, it's not fair if you got some low-level alts. Uh, so they let you uh, go back to gaining a lot of experience, and that's just if you just AFK. Any level can be here, everything is scaled to whatever level you are when you do it. So, kind of fun. And, of course, these bosses are no joke. Uh, the Demon Hunter can tank. But you don't have all of your skills. You only have the level 90 skill and the level 100 skill uh, in your talent tree. So you're not a good enough tank. <laughs> you can be good, but as you can see, there's a lot of damage going on here. And there's not that many healers that really focus on a tank. Uh, it would be really hard unless they're a dedicated healer to keep me up with the amount of damage. Uh, all of these bosses, and there's several variations. It's not always this boss that you'll see me fighting here. Uh, there's four or five different types and they have five or six different kinds of abilities they can draw from uh, and some are much harder to tank than others. Uh, the Demon Hunter, like I said, it's a good tank, but you just don't have enough uh, stat-wise and talent tree-wise to get everything that you need. You can do okay. I'm, I'm definitely got to get used to it. I'm definitely not a good, a very good tank, especially on these bosses that as you watch my health dwindle, I generally get two shot, even with my defensive cooldowns up. Uh, but overall, I think it's cool. It seems like it's a very active tanking method as opposed to just, you know, you beat on the boss, do like a shield block or something like that. You know, this one's very active. You have to use several skills at once and you have to maintain uh, what is essentially similar to what warriors go through with their rage. You maintain, in the tank case, pain. And you have to build it up by either taking damage or building it up with one of your skills. And there are a few that do give you more pain and stuff like that. Now you see, I try to get away, get out of these volcanoes. <laughs> There's just no getting away. So overall, I think uh, the Demon Hunter is really fun. The Havoc spec, in my opinion, doesn't do that much damage. Uh, that might just be because you don't have, like I said, all of the talents. And we don't have really high gear to support those talents yet. They do fine. They're just not how Death Knights were uh, back in the day, which were very, very uh, powerful in a lot of aspects of the game. Uh, you're not really going to plow through much with the Demon Hunter. They do fine, and I really do have fun with it. But as far as, you know, coming in here first try and going, oh, yeah, this is completely blowing everything away, you're probably not going to get that, at least not for now. Uh, a lot of the other classes are, in some cases, they generally, a lot of people think that they're underpowered. Some like the balance. Uh, there are uh, several talents, like I said, that were moved around and several of the classes, uh, are not the same as they were outlaw rogues being like perhaps one of the biggest examples. There are no more combat rogues. They're all outlaws now and they use pistols and things like that, which is all well and good. I really do enjoy what they've done and what they've changed. I think it's really good for the game and these invasions being the event that they are i think you know they're nice that they're uh, a little bit of a catch-up mechanic similar to how timeless isle was in uh, mr pandaria and uh here i'm just showing you this is like what you get out of those chests you get these weapons and uh you see it says stage six of six you get an upgrade item that's the chest right there and i save up a lot of them you get 
armor out of them and sometimes they'll be warforged like that for example in my belt and you just get all these weapons it has a chance to drop any weapon make sure you're in the spec of whatever weapon you want you know you don't want to be trying to get daggers if you're uh, an outlaw rogue for example which uses swords overall very interesting i really have a lot of fun right now i think legion will probably be the world of warcraft that kind of brings a lot of people back for a long time it seems like they're definitely going in the right direction so i hope you enjoyed this little bit of a video here guys and gals i just wanted to point out hey demon hunters are live they are pretty fun uh new storyline stuff coming out all the time right now a lot of inv in the invasion events are really fun and i'm having a lot of fun to be honest i haven't had this much fun in wow for quite a while to be honest and so hopefully this will be where blizzard turns things around and gets a lot of people back and gets back into the spirit of kind of the grungy gritty way that things were back in vanilla and burning crusade and i think they're on the right track Anyway, I just wanted to th do a quick little video for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press that like button down below, and I'll talk to you all next time.